Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today I thought we'd do another Lunar Lapin video and this time we're going to be making Otterline the Otter. Now Otterline is in this book here which is I think and Friends Year of Bacon. This is the latest book so I think this is book four and um, this is Otterline just here and she's a really really sweet character. So we're going to be making her, I'm going to start with the head for the first video and then on this another video we'll turn on to her body and her limbs because I think that's the best way then of trying to split it up otherwise it's just too long in one video. So I've been really looking forward to making her and I must say a big thank you to Georgina Bird who has sponsored this video for us all today um, and Georgina very kindly um, made a donation towards um, the cost of buying the kit for Otterline. So I have bought the kit, this is a remake kit which is here. And that was from Cool Crafting in the UK. Um, cool Crafting is the physical shop of the designer of all of the Lunar Lapping characters and clothing. Um, and the designer is called Sarah Peel. So Sarah is the author of the book and the designer of all these characters and clothes. So um, I'll pop her website address here for you if you want to get a kit or you can buy your felt separately. Um, and then make and make it yourself. Now I, I've got the remake kit because the pattern is in my book but if you've not got the book and you just want to make Otterline as a standalone character then you'll need to buy a make me kit because the make me kit will include the pattern. It's a bit confusing I know so if you need a remake kit there's no pattern in that you need the book but a make me kit has the pattern. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I've got, um, I want to talk about the pattern pieces because obviously we need to know which pieces we are tracing out. I am going to be sewing her by machine as much as I can do because that's my preferred method. Um, the whole of the body and limbs, I, I'm sure I can, can machine sew because I've done most of those before. But the head, we're gonna have to just do that by, um, by touch and by experience and see how we get on because I haven't made her head before and there are some bits that I think that we can machine sew um, but we'll, we'll work that through together as we as we get going so let's get on with this then and we'll see how you get on so let's have a chat first about the pattern and about how you know which bits you need to add on the first thing that I do is go to the character itself and I have a look at the instructions I have a look at the layout although I don't follow that layout and then I have a look at the instructions to see how the actual character itself is put together because these characters are designed to be hand stitched and we're going to be machine stitching. So we need to make allowance for that. So I do have a little look through the instructions and see what we need to do and how she's put together because then that starts to tell me how I can actually put her together. So things like the muzzle, where the muzzle on her face, bless her, is, um, is hand stitched over the top of the rest of it. And at the moment, I think I'll need to hand stitch that, but we'll see. So for now, I'm going to be laying, looking at the pattern pieces for the head and for the body and the arms. Luckily, we've got a nice generous piece in this kit of the white felt. Um, so I'll be laying the pieces out first, but maybe not cutting them out until I'm ready to, to actually sew those pieces and I've worked out what I'm doing. And obviously you get the benefit of all of this um, when you come to make yours because I'll already have done that bit for you. However, for example, let's just talk about the body and the arms. So when I'm working with, say, an arm, I trace off the stitching line that's on the pattern that's in the back of the book. Then I add on a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And what that does is that allows me to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and to turn it through. And then the arm should be roughly the same size as the original one. Now, when you're looking at your pattern pieces, for example, let's find an arm if I can. Just bear with me one second. Right, so here's the arm. And we can see that it says Luna, Otterline, Ziggy and Dora. Now, so if I put my pattern piece over the top there, you'll see that it traces pretty much perfectly the stitching line. And that would be the cutting line if you were hand sewing it. But from that, I've then added my quarter of an inch because there's no dotted line on the inside of that pattern piece. If we look at the tummy piece of... Um, line that's the character I'm making then when I put this on top you'll see that I've cut that out 
the pattern piece, but I've not added any extra seam allowance on the outside. And that's because of this dotted line here that's on the pattern. That indicates in the pattern pieces that this piece will be sewn with the right sides together and then turned out to be so that the stitching is on the inside. The same with the foot pad we can see here. And again, if we look here on the body, we can see we've got a bit here where we have got a dotted line. And then we've got our straight edges with no dotted line. So just for example, just to let you know, on this pattern piece here, if we were using that character, which we're not today, so don't worry, you haven't got this piece in yours because you don't need it. That would indicate that I don't need to add any seam allowance at the bottom there. However, I would go ahead and add seam allowance around these two curved sides here because there's no dotted line there for me to sew it on the other way and turn it round. I hope that gives you some indication of how it is so that you you can start to work out for yourself. If I've not done a, a video for a character yet of how it can be machine sewn, then you can you can hopefully try to determine from that. So this dotted line here is your is your key. Just one more piece. This leg here, we can see there's a dotted line at the top and at the bottom. So I wouldn't add seam allowance to those two pieces, those two edges. Let me just tip that up for you. But I would add seam allowance around the outside of the leg here and also down the outside. I'm not going to try and labour the point. I tend to go on a bit, so I won't labour the point. The other thing that I always do is on here, so like here we've got our arm for otter line, and it says cut four in the main felt. What I always do, because we are adding that quarter of an inch seam allowance onto a lot of our pattern pieces, it uses up the felt much more quickly than if we were just cutting it out and then hand stitching it, because we're adding, if you like, an extra half an inch, quarter of an inch here and quarter of an inch here makes half an inch in total on either side of that one piece. So if you think about it, by the time we've got our forearms ready for cutting out, we've actually added half an inch, one inch, one and a half inches, two inches of extra felt that we are using to make this character that isn't allowed for in the kit. If you are buying your felt by the meter, then you won't have a problem because you'll just use however much you want. But because I'm using the kit from Cool Crafting and then machine sewing it because I'm enlarging all of the pieces, I need to be careful that I don't run out of felt before I've got everything cut out. So what I do is I always cut out the right number of pieces that I need. So in this case, I've got four arms cut out. I've got my four legs cut out of the pattern of tracing paper. I have my two tummies, two side tummies cut out. So again, what I'm trying to say is that you need to have all of the pattern pieces you need cut out so we can lay them out on the felt from the kit first before you start to cut anything out at all. Because otherwise you run the risk of fully of running out of your felt before you've had time to cut out all your character. So that's why, so cut out of your paper pattern piece, four arms, four legs, all the multiples that you need in order to make your character. And you'll see that I've got all of my pattern pieces here. And then just run through, just make sure that when you're making this together, we've got everything we need. So I will then go to the instructions. Where are we for Otterline? Oh, gone past her, hold on one second. Here she is. And I'll say, right, so the first thing we start off with the ears. Have I got four little ear pieces cut out? Oops, and I haven't just there, but I have somewhere. So I'll put together all of my four pattern pieces, probably on the floor somewhere, for my ear first. Then I'll move on to the side head. There's my side head. Yes, I've got that. Have I got my head gusset? Yes, I have. And, and that way I work through all of my pattern pieces to make sure that I've got the muzzle, I've got the nose, I've then got the two side bodies right there, I've then got the tummy and the tummy insert, I've got four legs, four arms, two feet pads, a throat piece for under her throat just under here and her tail. 
So apart from my ears, which have gone obviously gone flicking off the table somewhere, which I did have earlier, then I've got all of my pieces together. So that's the way that I know before I start even cutting anything out that I've got all of my pattern pieces together that I need. So hopefully that's just a quick quick recap and really sort of enables you then to be able to look and see well, what's the process is Claire using in order to determine what she needs and hopefully that'll be helpful. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do now is start and lay my pattern pieces out onto my felt. And then I will then start to pin this out and we'll have a look and, and keep your fingers crossed for me that we can fit everything onto the, the felt that we've got. So the other thing I do is I also have a look at the felt and I think there is slightly a difference between the two sides. So I choose which side that I'm going to be using and I make sure that this has been steamed and is flat just in case we do need to press any seams whilst we're sewing our character that there's no shrinkage going to occur. The next thing then that I do is start popping on my pattern pieces and what you'll find is that I've got my legs mirrored so I have two um, one way and two the other and also my arm pieces are mirrored as well so that I cut my felt out on the single but I cut it out with everything um, facing upwards so that that can be just how we want it to be and that we get the right side. So I'm just going to, now there's no nap or any grain line on felt and we go right up to the edges with our pattern pieces when we are working these out and we interlace these as much as we can do to reduce the the waist and I might, might be that I put an arm and a leg together like that to make the best use so let me just have a quick play around with this because you don't need to see me doing that um, all you need to know is that I do um, place all this around I did find my ears they were stuck on the bottom of my sleeve and, I, and also bear in mind that I need two in red, two in white and two in brown as well for those. So we get those stuck on there. But again, we're just trying to make the very best that we can of this felt. And I just want to be really clear, I am not criticising the kit from Cruel Crafting in any way, shape or form. It's because I have added, choosing to add seam allowance onto mine to machine sew them and that's why it's taking so much more felt than it would have done had I just have cut them out the way that the pattern was intended. So let me just carry on just placing these all out. And literally all I do to start off with is just place them onto the felt as best as I can do. And then I start to have a look and see what we need cutting out and what we don't. And then if I can adjust it at all, because once it's all laid out, you can see then and start to see where you might want to have um, the different felts. Like here, I can fit a foot pad in down there, and I might be able to fit another one in down there. So again, I just try and fill all those gaps that I that I make, whilst making sure that everything is the right orientation. So let me carry on with this, which I've said about three or four times now, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've just finished just doing the preliminary pinning of my pattern pieces on. Now I'll run through this with you. So I've got two legs of the of one orientation this way, because remember you have to have a right and a left a mirrored copy when you're doing um the limbs because you're they're thumb, they're not symmetrical. And if you want to use all the same side of your felt, you have to have two copies of your legs going one way and two the other. The same with your arms as well. So I've got my, so two legs there and two arms, and then I've squeezed this little ear in just here, look on that little bit, so we don't waste that piece of felt. I've then got the two more arms in the opposite orientation here, and the tummy inset just there. Two feet pads here, and the final brown ear, because <clears throat> there's two brown and two white. Excuse my throat. <clears> throat> Then I've got my tummy inset here because this will have the white attached to the top of it and my other two legs. I've then got the tail just here. And if you look, I'm right up against the edge of that felt as well. There's no gap at all, nothing for me to um, cut off. And likewise, between these two legs here, I'll do one cut between those two legs. Um, the, 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 the pattern pieces are touching each other, but not overlapping. Um, and again, I've gone right up to the edge. So on felt, you can do that. This is the head gusset just here. That's one side body just there. This is the head. I've cut out a piece so that it's it's on the fold. So rather than it being on the fold, oh, you can't see just there, hold on one second. 
So that's the neck edge there, that's the round the back of the head and the ear will go in there and in there. So those bits are the, um, the head. And then I've got my final side body bit just here. And you can see I've got this amount of felt here and a couple of little smidges available around and about that I can put into my stash just for saving because I do wool applique as well, so I save all of those bits. So the kit is generous, but if you were to um, get something wrong or miss something out, that's all the felt you've got left to put anything right, so just bear that in mind. The white, you've got a little bit more leeway. I've got Otterline's muzzle there and an ear there and an ear tucked in just there. I've then got the um, bib insert just here and her throat insert just there. So that's all fitted really well because we've probably got enough felt to do the whole same thing again here, should we wish to. Um, hopefully we're not gonna need that because it'll go right first time. But just it's reassuring to know that we've got some space. I know when I cut out Z um, Hamish, there was no spare at all for any, um, any extra limbs. So that then really made me be very careful. And then we've got her little nose on this piece of black felt just there. So I'm going to carry on pinning these down because they're just roughly pinned at the moment and then I'm going to cut all of these out. Um, I always cut out all of my pattern pieces together at the start. I don't just cut out the head pieces because if I'd have just cut out the head pieces one way and not been particularly careful about how I laid everything out, there would be a strong chance that I'd use up all my felt and not have enough for everything else. So at this early stage, I always put it, all of it out and get it all cut out in one go once I've double checked that I've got everything all in from the pattern pieces onto my felt because then I know that whatever I've got left over then is truly left over. Okay, those are just some of my tips anyway, but um, I'll meet you on the other side and we'll start and talk about sewing. Okay, so after you've cut everything out, you're gonna end up with a big pile of pieces like this and then that's when we start to sort them through. So one, two, three, four legs. Just get those all together. One, two, three, four arms, tummies together, and the tummy insert with the white felt that goes to one side, tail is standalone, the feet pad to go with the feet, and the nose, the throat, the muzzle, two ears there two brown ears and the white thing are the ones that we're going to be working with. So we're going to be working with our um, head gusset, the head, the throat, the muzzle, the four ear pieces and the black nose piece. And the next thing we're going to do is look at uh, marking our notches and our tailor's tags because in some cases you need to know whether or not to, to notch or not. So let me just talk through that. So if we look at this head gusset piece, we've got two darts here and two darts here. So I will do a little tailor's tack at the top of each of these head darts so that I know where I'm sewing to. And I will notch by just using my snips and just a couple of millimetres in just to give me a little cut in the, in the felt, the legs of each of those dart pieces. So let's trim that off a little bit more. Um, what I won't do, so let, let me just finish off doing this piece first. And then I'll show you what I mean by a tailor's tack in a minute or two as well, if you've not seen me do those before. That will be enough to mark the legs of those darts so that I can find them to put them together to sew them. The reason, so that's that's all fine. Um, and I can do a tailor's tack on there. The reason why I am notching these ones is because there is a seam allowance, okay? If we look on the muzzle though, there's no seam allowance on here because this is going to get sewn onto the front of the face after we've actually sewn the head together. So if I went now and notched each of these little darts, that's going to cut into the final part of this because of the muzzle. It's going to show when it's actually finished and be a little thing. So I'm not going to snip that. I'll probably do a, a tailor's tack at the end and I'll probably put a little stitch on the edge of each of these little legs of these darts so I can see which direction they need to go in. I'll go through that with you. So your rule of thumb is you can notch and do your little snip if there is a seam allowance on here. 
So like on the bottom of the body here, there's a seam allowance, so there's a notch there. So I'll do a little notch there. And again, I've added seam allowance on here, so I'm going to do a little notch there. There isn't one there. There is seam allowance on here as well. So you do just have to be careful to know where you've got your seam allowance and where you haven't. Likewise, I am going to do a little notch at the top of the head snip as well. I will be cutting that down later. I'll put these two together, can't I, to do that actually. And I think that's all. Yeah, see the nose I won't even snip because we're going to be folding that in half and we'll remember where that is. So it's, it, you do just need to be careful, but anything with a seam allowance, um, I'll notch. Anything without, I'll put my tailor's tacks in. So let's get some thread and then we can then put some seam some, um, tailor's tacks in. We'll use this bright pink. Excuse my squeaky chair. I don't know what it is about chairs. It's nothing to do with my weight, of course. So let's just pop this in here. Get that thread thread out. Okay. So all we do is we thread a needle for a tailor's tag is we thread a needle and we just have our thread double with the ends together. We don't put a knot in though. So you don't need a knot in the bottom of there. So let's use this head cut this head gusset bees first. So at each of the top of these dots here, I am going to take a bite out of my felt. It's got to go right the way through to the other side because we're going to be um looking for it and I can just see it just poking through there I'll do a bigger stitch next time so you can see so I do one north to south and then I do one east to west and I leave a tail and I leave another tail here snip through there and snip through there and it leaves a tufty piece of thread but what it does is it leaves a little mark on the other side of my fabric let's do another one and show you that pin out, don't need that one now. So make sure you do go through so you can see your needle on the other side of your fabric. Leave a thread, leave a, a tail, and then go north to south on there and east to west through the loop and snip your threads off. And then when we go, let me just do the, oh, I'll do this side first. So then when we remove our pattern piece carefully. The threads pull through the pattern piece and are left in the felt at the exact location of those dots. And then by finding our snips, we can put our snips together on the edge. We can find our dot and that's how we then know to sew across there to make our dart. You can draw it on with pen if you want to. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. I don't like to risk that the pen doesn't come out of the felt when I've... Um, ironed it or that it'll come back again so I find tailors tacks are the most are the quickest and easiest and they literally take seconds once you get used to doing them so I'm going to go ahead the other thing that I've done on my head gusset is I've added two notches on the back here and one notch on the front so I'm going to pop those in because that will tell me when I take my pattern piece off which is the front and which is the back and again I'm just in the seam allowance so that won't be in the way I'll that'll be my stitching line so that'll be in the seam allowance so you won't see that bit so I'm going to go through now and I'm just going to be on the head pieces I'm just going to do those tailors tacks I'll come back to you and show you what I do with the muzzle one when I get on to doing that okay so I'm just working with the muzzle now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the leg of one and as close to the edge as I can do and I'm going to do one stitch up leaving a tail I'm then going to go in right at the point of that one and I'm going to take another stitch down. And what that will hopefully do is give me a bit of a framework. I'm going to leave a loop in the, th in the stitch so that we can cut through that. So I've cut through those and let's just lift that off and have a look. And that does give me a triangle then to work with because I can put those two legs together and we've got the small leg there. So that's how I'm going to do mine. So let's just work the way through this again. So I'm going close to the edge and I do a stitch about three quarters of the way up the um, top of the triangle. I'm gonna leave a little tail. I then go in at the point of the tail of the stitch and come down and come out again towards the end. 
and I leave a little sort of loop in that stitch, cut off the end and cut through the tail. And then if I show you when I lift that up, that then has marked that triangle. So the, the, thre the stitch at the end I know is in the very end of my triangle and I can pull those together, stitch those quite carefully because they're very, very tiny anyway, aren't they? We just need to know that that's the end stitch and then that's what we'll do. So that's how I'll do mine. Um, hopefully that all makes sense to you. So there's quite a few there to do. So let's just do this other one. In it, make sure you just go in or out on that very, very end point and then that will tell you the extent of your, your stitch needs to be for that. Okay, I'll just do the other side and then we'll move on. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces all to one side. Now all of my tailor's tacks are done. I'm happy with all of that. And now what I'm going to do is take my ear pieces, put your pattern pieces to one side because we'll need those another day because I'm sure we're going to love Otterline and want to make her again. So you should have two brown and two white pieces of felt. I'll say brown, it's a grey brown, isn't it? But um, it's that grey brown colour. I'm going to keep our pattern pieces to one side so we've got those. And then we're just going to match these up so that we've got two pairs of ears. Now I have added um, seam allowance onto these to hold them together. Obviously, you could do these ones by hand if they're a little bit too fiddly for you, but I'll show you some techniques to help you get round them. And we've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So if you've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance, what I try to do is make sure the seam allowance is, is level with the side of my presser foot, because then I can um, gauge it better when I'm going round corners. So to do that, I use a seam gauge or a tape measure, and I sort of put that against the edge of my presser foot, and then because I can move my needle and you might be able to do the same, it's usually the same button as the zigzag machine, as the zigzag button. I will then move my needle across so that the quarter of an inch is between my needle, which is here, and the edge of my presser foot there. Because then when I pop this under here, I can line the edge of my foot up with the very edge of my fabric and sew round and I'll know that I'm in the right place. So what I'm going to do now, oops, get my um, press foot, keep kicking things under my desk, is I'm going to first start by putting my needle in my work so that we've got everything anchored down. I have got a pin going across, so I've just put a pin across like that just to hold it still for me, but it is delicate work, so you've got to take your time. Turn the speed down on your machine as well, last thing you want is to be sewing right off the edge. And I'm going to take a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. Okay, and that starts us off. Now I've got a function where my needle always stops in my work. And if you haven't got that, just use the hand crank button. Let me just show you where that is. On the side of your machine, you're just going to use this to lift and lower the, the needle, okay? So that's your, what I, I call it, the hand crank, but it, I don't know quite know what it's called really, officially. But that's my terminology. So use that to make sure your needle's always down in your work because we're going to pivot. So we're going to lift up the presser foot and then we're going to start, as we go forward to go around this curve, we'll change the angle. So let's take a few stitches here. It starts off curving quite nicely, but the, the felt, if you're not careful, starts to bunch up. So just flatten it down again. Now just hold on to the edge and just be careful because we're trying to follow the edge of the felt without it going too severe in terms of its... So I've finished with that pin now because that's all holding together. And then I start to then lift my presser foot and now I can spin my ear round. Can you see how that moves? But the needle's in, in the sewing so it holds it still for me. And that means I can just take one stitch and then move the ear round more. Take another stitch or two at a time. Just see how, how many you need. And you gently come round this curve to make your little ears for Otterline. I'm just going to reverse on the edge there just to finish that off. Okay, so needle up again. Let's take this out of the work and you'll see that what we've got, and hopefully you'll agree, I'll take my threads off is this really nice little ear, just sewn like that. And 
you know, we've got the quarter of an inch seam allowance. Is it exactly perfect all the way round? No, it's not. But on these small pieces, it will do. The next thing I'm going to do then is take my, I forgot what they're called then, my pinking shears, that's the word I wanted, um, and I'm just going to use those to snip around quite close to the stitches, but that's going to remove some of this bulk from out of the stitch, so I've taken off that amount, so really just a seam allowance. If you haven't got pinking shears, you can do little snips like this into your work and you're going into your work, into the seam allowance. And what you're doing is you're trying to remove some of that bulk from the edge of that ear because whenever we turn curves, doesn't matter what, what size they are, we need to either snip them like this or we need to snip them just straight so that the fabric can actually sit nicely once that's turned round. And then what we're going to do then is put our finger inside there very carefully because we don't want to stretch these little delicate ears. And we're just going to turn it round the other way. And use the nose up there a bit bigger, really, the nose of something. Let's use this little seam cage. Got a little. And we're just going to ease those stitches out to the outside edge. Sometimes you can just roll it through your fingers as well. And what happens is that with taking out those little snips, it just helps that seam lie nice and flat. Once you've got it straight, I'm just going to snip off those triangles of the seam allowance there and make sure that's nice and flat. And there, I think you'll, you'll agree, we've got a lovely, lovely nice curve on the edge of Otterline's ear. So just, just manipulate it so that you're happy with it. And then once you've done that, we're just going to sew the other one and make sure we've got the other one all sewn out. And then we'll be able to pop these into the head. Okay, so I've got two little ears down for Otterline. I've made sure that they are roughly the same size. I think it's going to be almost impossible to get them absolutely identical, but just do what you can to get them roughly about the same size. And there we've got those two just there. The next thing you're going to do is go and take your head piece, take your pattern piece off that. I have marked the eye with a tailor's tack as well. So just make sure those tailors tacks stay in or take your pattern pieces off and I've also put a snip at the top here where the cut needs to go down to so we need to do a cut down into our work don't cut towards the eye you've got to cut towards the back of the head because that's where Otterline's ears sit so locate your snip and then we're going to snip down to but not through that little dot and we're going to do that on both sides so locate your snip again and then we're going to go down in a straight line to but not through that little dot because then with the white side facing towards the bit that's joined because we want that to be the front of the head we're going to slot that ear inside that area there took it down as far as you can as well so it's nicely sat in there because we want a little bit of seam out so that when we sew this and turn it round Otterline's ear is just nicely nestled inside there. So let's just make sure we've got that all in place. There's no shaping on Otterline's ear. You've not got to do a little um, tuck or anything like that. And I'm going to put a pin just to hold it together, being that the actual ear is staying in place quite nicely. And then we'll do the other one. So the ear, the white bit, goes down onto your felt and pop the, the ear into your heart just there took it right down into the nook of that crease now I'm just sort of gathering mine up slightly as well it's just going to give it a little bit of shape I think and then I'm going to put a pin in at the end here I'm just going to catch that and then we're going to sew from the edge here and down to that dot and then we're just going to just come off just past that dot in terms of holding the ear in place Okay, so we sew these ears in with just an eighth of an inch. So we're going to do less than, almost less than we were doing for the, well, less than we were doing because we were doing quarter of an inch before, weren't we? So half of that, let's get my pedal. I'm going to take it nice and steady. So a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. Just hold that in place. Now, when you start to sew, on the back of your presser foot, you should have a little button. Um, and I've got a little bit black button here. And what I'm going to do is, if I put my needle in my work, lift that up and I can push that in when I start to sew, as it starts to lift. Oops. 
will it go in? Let's find my pin. doesn't want to go in the bottom of the back. There it is, I've got it now. So that will keep my presser foot. So I've pushed in the little button at the back of my presser foot. That will keep that flat for me whilst I'm sewing over this bulk now. And then you've got to have what to help it through. So I get my trusty awl, which is a sharp pointy tool like this, because we can use that to help the fabric through the belt and then we get to the other side and I'm, I'm going to just do a little reverse there because I don't want that ear to fall out so needle up and cut off my threads and literally we're just doing that the ear just is supposed to poke through like that so you, because the ears are very very small on otter line and there's the first one done so let me just take this off for a minute and let me just show you that little button that I was talking about so that's a little button there it, it's I, I don't know what it's called, so I can't tell you what it's called. But what it does is that as the foot starts to tilt, it will keep it straight. There's a mechanism that just manages, I don't know, understand it, but keeps it straight. And then as you come over the hump, it'll stop it. But it keeps the presser foot from doing that, from tipping upwards as you're sewing. So that's what I'm using. You don't always have to use it, but it's it's just there if you if you want to. And then let's do the other ear. So we've got one little ear in, look, just lovely and cute. We've not gone past the, just, just literally to the other side of the dot there with our tailor's tag. So we've got another one. Oh, I've just noticed my sides of my head aren't quite level up. And we've got a little bit of felt just poking through because we need to be able to see that that felt is through the head to be able to get that to hold on properly. And the edges of, edges of your head need to be right together. So let's watch the edge of that. So again, let's put our work underneath our presser foot. Do a couple of stitches forward. Needle in your work to hold it steady and a couple of stitches back. That's going to hold it together. Now let's take the pin out because that's going to get in the way for us. And I'm going to locate and just try and use that little black button as I start to sew. It should in the back. Come on. There it is, I've got it in. Right, now I'm going to carry on sewing with my presser foot will stay straight for me. And I'm just coming off the edge just there and I'm just going to do a couple of stitches reverse as well just to hold that still. So now let's take the presser foot up, out the work, out. Trying to make sure that you've not got otter line with one ear bigger than the other. So let's have a look at those. Yeah, they're pretty good, I'd say. So now, to take out your tailor's tags, just make sure you don't, you've not got your ones for the eye. So just use the ones for the ear, and you should be able to just pull those threads, and they should pull out quite nicely. Now, there's a trick if they get stuck, because obviously when we're using them, they sometimes get stuck in our sewing. Well, these ones might actually be, just be double. So pull out the ones you can, but if like that one's stuck, what you do is you locate one side of it and you snip it off close to where you're sewing, just one side, and then if you pull on the other, it comes through. Because what's happened is your needle has pierced through that thread and then caused it to get stuck, so it's been anchored into the, into the head. And what we want is we want to get it out intact so we don't leave any pink thread in there. And so let's do the same this way. So let's move the tailor's tack out of the way for the eye. Pull on the threads again for this one. Well, it's a few, that one's come out easily. It's the same whether you're dressed making or making these characters, it doesn't matter. Because we want these threads to come out intact. Nope, those aren't going to come out quite neatly. So I'm going to just snip that one off quite close. And then it should just pull out, and it does. Because if I give that, oh, it does, that one has come out as well. So they, they don't always come out neatly, but if you just use, know that little trick of just snipping them off one side close to your sewing, close to your fabric, then you'll be able to get that out. So we've got two little ears in there now, looking nice and cute. And the next thing we're going to work with then is going to be this head gusset. So let's take our threads off and I have marked the back if you remember of the head gusset and the front so that we know where we're working with and we've got all of our tailor's tacks going through our pattern piece for the 
that and I've snipped on the edge because we've got a seam allowance. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to be working with the back of our felt. We're going to locate the first two snips and put those together and then we're going to locate the tailor's tack that refers to that little snip for that diamond and we're just going to snip a sew across there. Now I'm going to reverse stitch where I start but then I'm going to stop on so run run off my stitches off by the point of the tailor's tack and leave a little tail because we'll knot those ends together because that's what we do with darts. So we're going to start there where the little snips are if you can see those. So I've put those two snips together. And I'm working on the wrong side, so that's my right side of my felt. This is the wrong side, and I'm going to sew to the to the tailor's tack there. So let's just do that. Apologies if the light whites out on my machine. I don't know how to make it any better, I'm afraid. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, just to anchor that. And then I'm going to run off on that point. And then I'm going to leave a, just some threads. So that's what it looks like. Let's take off the starting threads for now, put those in the bin. And then what we do is we separate out the two threads that we've just sewn with and we tie those in a knot. I usually do three. Because we don't want um, a, a bubble at the end of the dart, we want it to lie nice and flat. And if you start trying to reverse stitch those, then you tend to not go over the, the same stitches again. You tend to make yourself a new stitching line and then they, they never sit quite right. So this is the same whether you're doing dressmaking, say like bus starts, or if you're doing skirts and doing darts in a waistline, and then we then just snip those threads off. So there's our nice little, neat little curving um, dart. So let's do the next one now. So the next one's very close to the one. So first of all, we locate the two little um, cuts in our fabric, put those on top of each other, make sure they're right, and then we locate the edge of the dart just there, so they're just angled slightly. Make sure you're not losing that. And then we then can just put those together. And then we start stitching. So reverse again, forward. And coming off on the dart, which we have, leave a tail, snip off our starting threads because we reversed with those, so they're all fine. And there we can see we've got two darts now. So now I'm going to tie a knot here with these. One, two, three. And then I snip them off, leaving about a centimetre of thread because those knots aren't going to undo. But it just it just stops, just makes sure that it's not going to undo, I suppose, with those um, little knots. That's it. And that's what we've got on one side. And again, now that those are um, out, I can use my quick and pick or my all just to pull out the threads for the for the tailor's tack and again they should just pull out nicely for you if they don't use that little trick so let's just try this side as well see if we've got any stuck no they're all going to come out for me all nicely that's good are they well that one's stuck maybe no it's come out just a little bit of a th you don't want to pull it so hard that you break your threads so that one's not coming out so let's go on to the right side here so there's the other side of it and all I'm going to do is snip that off close to the edge, come back to this side and then give that one a pull and it just comes straight away whereas it wouldn't before. So you've got one shape, side shaped now, now we're going to do the other. So I'm just going to do this, this side of this head now exactly the same as I did the other one and then we'll talk about attaching these two pieces of felt together for the head. Okay, so we've got our um, darts in our head now and we're trying to get the same distance between the darts on both sides mine's one a little bit narrower one side than the other but it's close enough for me so i'm going to work with that we're then going to locate our notches there's my two for the back of the head and there's my one for the front of the head and i'm going to place this right side together with the so i've got the ears sticking out of my right side of my face and what i've done is that on that fold line where they I put the two heads together and then I've just put a notch top and bottom on that fold line, okay? Because that's going to give us the match point. So that notch is in the halfway point and that notch is in the halfway point. So I put those two together and that is where we're going to start sewing because we're going to do one side of the head first 
and then we're going to do the other. So we're going to start here with quarter of an inch seam allowance and then when we get to quarter of an inch away, so we're kind of going to, let's get a fixie on pen just to help us because it's going to be on the inside and let's get my seam gauge. So if we measure a quarter of an inch in on this side, we can do a line. Oops, can't do it very well. And if we measure a quarter of an inch in from this side, we're going to get a little cross on that edge. And that's where we're going to leave the needle in. Not very clear, but I'll be able to see it. We're going to leave the needle in there while we lift it up. And then we're going to move this fabric around and go around the back of the head. So the ear darts. So where, let's have a look on this pattern and see where the ear dart is. So the ear dart seam should match the first dart on the front of that head. So let me just re reiterate this. Because what we because we've got quarter of an inch seam allowance on here, so all the way along there and all the way along here, we've got quarter of an inch seam allowance, which we need to take account of when we're sewing. So we're going to start across in the centre here and li literally sew half a centimetre, and then we're going to stop with our needle in the work, and then we're going to manipulate all of this so that we pivot out and sew around. Now we want to have the ear dart here match with the first dart there that's what we will do and then we'll carry on sewing around the back of the head and this is what's going to give us the shape it looks complicated but when you're actually doing it it's not so bad so let's just start again so you match the notch on the center of the front gusset with the center of the front now those are notches that we've added okay because we're machine sewing and we needed to add those we're then mentally making a note of where quarter of an inch is in from, from this side seam here on the gusset and where the edge is here on the gusset. So I've got a little dot there and I'm going to leave my needle in my work whilst I manipulate this round because although that's a corner, we want that to be a, a still a corner on, on the sewing, but we want it to be slightly softer, but we've got to change direction and that's our change direction point let me just put those tailors tacks for the eyes out the way because we want those to be held down and out the way so that's what we're going to do and then when we manipulate it we're going to manipulate the fabric round and our next reference point is that the ear has to hit the first dart on the head gusset and then once we've done that we're going to then just take our breath and breathe and then we're going to then start and go down the back of the head here and then our next next match point will be so there's a bit of easing in to go on here look that we need to then match that and this is why we walk through it sometimes just to see what's happening because if we put a pin in here about a quarter of an inch in that's where that's going to be that's then going to be on there and felt is fairly forgiving so you can work with it that ear is going to match up with that notch just there, with that dart just there. And then the side of the face here is going to match. So it does all fit because, we, as I say, we're just walking our way through it with our fingers and just making sure that we can see where we're going to be. And then when we turn that round the other way, when this is sewn, of course, then that's going to give us a lovely shape to Otterline's head that we want and, and to carry it round. So that's the way that I work through. Is this going to work? Is it possible? Um, the answer is absolutely yes, it is. But we need to do it a bit at a time. And I would recommend that you don't tack this because when you're trying to sew these, you need to have these bits loose to be able to work with. So don't tack them yet. So again, we're going to be working with our quarter of an inch seam allowance oh I've been doing the wrong way around looks so I can't stitch that way I'm gonna to have to stitch this way first so hold on one second we've got to do both sides anyway but we'll turn it over to do the other one so I need quarter of an inch going up there and I need quarter of an inch going along here and that gives us our cross point which gives us our dot that we're going to then pivot onto so we're going to do it both sides are identical so it doesn't matter which way round we go just move those dart um, little eye things out of the way because we need to keep those in. So let's start. So quarter of an inch, so my fabric's going to be on the edge. A couple of stitches in. 
make sure I write on the edge. Let's do a couple of stitches in. Take my pin out so that we don't start sewing over that needle in my work. And now I'm going to sew a couple of in stitches in until I get to that dot point. I'm going to leave my needle in my work and lift my presser foot up. Now I'm going to move the front of the head backwards and the gusset forward so that they then cross over. Just smooth it under your presser foot. It will work. And then I want you to match up your first dart of your head with your ear. And that's going to give you this seam here. Just massage, felt is really forgiving. So just massage that all down. We don't want any puckers on the sewing line. We want it to be all lovely and neat. And I'm just going to use my awl just to make sure that I've pulled that little corner that we're stitching back so that it's as far back behind my presser foot as I can. So let's start sewing again with our raw edges of our fabric together. Nice and steady. Don't go too fast. Have it your speed really slow down. Ear to that dart and then just squish your fabric down and you'll start and sew. Right, we're coming to another bit here. So let's just lift our presser foot up. We want to get to that dart bit first while we're going up here. So I'm going to press the dart to the other way to the ear. I'm going to use my awl to hold that dart down. And sewing forward. And then lift my presser foot up whilst I just manipulate this dart round because I want to have, this has got to finish on the bottom edge here at a right angle. So let's put those two bits together now and pin that because we can. Now we can manipulate the raw edges together so that we've got this all nicely spaced. And we're going to flatten out this other section here. So again, there's quite a lot of bulk under here. So we'll probably use that button again in the back of the presser foot when we can. So get that presser foot level. Use the button. Yes, it's in, right, okay. So let's start sewing again. I'm still going to sew round. I've got pressure on this hand and I'm guiding with the other one. We can use the awl if we want to, just to help it in case it gets stuck. Nice and steady. Trying to keep it to our quarter of an inch. Just stop every now and again. Just make sure your raw edges are together. I'm going to sew off this neck edge now. But reverse stitch because we need to have that reinforced. Needle up. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's hope this has all worked out nicely. Now we've gone a bit narrow there. You can see that. Let's turn this round. But yes, we've got our dart matching up to the first bit there. And our head's all in, all nice, and we've got a bit of a curve there. Now, I believe that the muzzle will go over the edge of here and hide this nose bit here. So don't worry if your pivot point isn't as neat. Mine isn't as neat as I'd quite like it. But as I say, I think that's going to be hidden once I start to do the um, actual sewing. So let's do the other side now. But for this, we're going to have to turn it over. Or what shall we say from the other side? Let's just have a look. Let me just work this one out. Hold on one second. So if we put that neck edge together, we can sew round the back of the head first. We can then match up the second dart because we're coming from the other direction. And then we can sew that down to the nose. And then we're just going to stop while we just do that pivot point. But I think that'll be fine. Right, I'm going to do it that way. So let's see how this goes. Let's just push that through. So I'm start, starting off at my neck edge on this one. I'm going to pop that into my sewing machine. And we're going to sew forward and then reverse a few stitches. Just to pivot that head in and then needle in the work. So hold it still. Now we're going to see, got one curve going that way, one curve going this way. So now we're trying to, trying to, we're going to pop this, the, the, the dart, the correct dart, which is the one towards the front of the head against the ear seam, because that's our match point that we're working towards. And that tells us how much felt we've got to work with in the back here. 
So we, that's back of the cut head quite nice there. And then that will all come together. So we're going to use the awl again just to make sure that we've got all of this held together. It looks fiddly and, and, and it is because it's designed to be hand sewn. It's not designed to be machine sewn, but it is possible. So it's just persevering with it to make sure that you can get it to go how you want it to. Um, obviously, you can hand sew it if you wish. Um, but I'm going to just fold those two darts the opposite direction so I can see where I'm working. I've got a little bit of discrepancy here on the back of the head, so I'm just going to pull that felt over and tuck the other one under a bit so that it, it's it's as level as I can get it because otherwise we're going to change the shape of Otterline's head and we don't want to do that. So now I'm going to start stitching around the edge here, keeping to our quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I know that from the edge of my presser foot. Coming up to this bulky bit here, and I'm only going to sew to the second dart before I stop stitching. Which is there, okay, so I've stopped again. So now I'm lifting up my presser foot again because now I want to manipulate the fabric here. So I'm going to move all of that that we've just sewn out of the way and I've just pulled, pulled the, the bit that we've just sewn out of the way backwards and that's allowing me now to manipulate this front piece. So the front piece is going to sit fairly well together, actually. So I've just moved that together, put my edges together. Now I'm going to put my foot down again. I might not use the button this time. Just keep going. Quarter of an inch. And I'm keeping this out, this bottom bit out of the way because we don't want that to get mixed up with all of this. And we're, we, I'm just pulling this out as well here, just on the, that folded bit towards the join where we started the last one. Because again, we want our right edges, our right sides to be together and the raw edges of our fabric to be together. So I'm folding it out of the way with my awl. Let's stitch round again. And we're kind of heading towards that button part. And then I'm going to lift it up and then I'm going to put everything flat under my press a foot as we go along the edge of that nose. Reverse. Needle up. Mm, okay, I think we've done it. So let me just press to take off these start these ending threads, starting threads, and those ones there, ending ones. So we have now sewn in. So here we've got a flat bit across the edge of the nose, as we can see there. And then we've pivoted at each point and we've gone over each side. So now if we turn this round the right way, we'll have a little look and see if it looks like it does in the picture. Because it would be good if it does. Oh yes. That's starting to come together, isn't it? It's got a lovely curve to the back of her head. Little ears are sticking out. We've got the marks for where her eyes are going to go once we get onto those, and I might sew those on before we. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on and finish first. And then the next that we're going to do is put the, the throat piece in just here. And again, we can do that by machine. So, so far, so good, I think. It looks like it does in the picture, so that's good. And all of this will push out. We've got the that one's not quite as lined up as I'd have liked it to be, but I'm, it's within my tolerance level, so I'm going to go with it. And that one's pretty good as well. So there's only us that know that those are supposed to be exactly lined up. Well, and Sarah Peel, obviously. But um, for that, we're doing all right so far, I think. Right, so let's get on with the next bit, which is found in this bit here, which is the throat piece pattern piece to one side. First thing I'm going to do is fold it in half. I'm going to find that centre point, put a little snip in, just a little snip, just to help us. So work out which is your right side, that's my right side. So I want my right sides together, so the outside of the head. Oh, we're going to have to turn this around the other way again. Let's just put it back again to where it was. This is going to be a bit like putting the feet pads in, I think. So we're going to match the notch on the bottom of the nose area 
with a pin. And then we know that the edges of the throat end with the edge of the neck. So let's put a pin just there. So those are our reference points, aren't they? So I'm putting my pins on the gray, brownie grey side of the wall, the outside fabric, not on the white. And then this is going to sit inside there like this and we're going to put it in without it puckering all nice and neatly and we're going to put that all the way around so let's put a couple more pins in just to help us hold it still and this bit you can tack if you wanted to a bit like the feet pad some things are worth tacking aren't they And this is where I felt it's useful because it does does stretch. So we'll stretch to accommodate around that curve. And what we want is for the actual throat piece, like the feet pads, we want those to be flat in effect. Because that's where we're going to be sewing with that to the down to our the bed of our machine. So that's what mine's looking like now. So my, my it's all so it's all um attached in there. Let me turn that pin around the other way. It's not going to get in the way when we start to sew. Have got to watch your fingers. Might be an idea to tack this. I think I might as well actually and see if we can get a nice finish. Yeah, let's tack that in, shall we? I think that'll give us the best chance of success. So where's a needle? That's had white thread in. I want some bright pink. you can see it clearly what we've got and a decent length of thread I'm going to do my thread double put my glasses on for threading my needle because it's quicker there we go I'm just going to do my little quarters knot at the end of my needle there's a video on my channel how to do quarters knot so you just cross one, two, or should do, and then pull it through right to the end. Just get a quick little knot on the end. And I'm going to sew it inside what will be the seam allowance. And I'm going to make sure that when I'm just tacking it, my raw edges are together. And I'm going to take my pins out as I go. Don't do your stitches too far apart because you do need it to actually hold it all together for you. So I'm just doing a little tacking running stitch along here. And tacking does take time and yes, you can argue you can battle with the pins, but sometimes it's quicker to tack than it is to unpick. And that's the theory that I'm using today with this. So make sure you're not going to get any puckers in your white felt. Just by feeling with your fingers. Try and get your raw edges together because these are designed to fit together nicely. And we're actually going to sew this at a quarter of an inch. adjust your edges to make sure they're as straight as you can get them close together. And then I'll just do a double stitch at the end there just to hold that. So that's how it looks from the inside and when you hold that out there's no puckers in that white felt at all. And then there's no puckers along the edge of that brown felt either. So now when we put that onto the base of our sewing machine, we're going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around here. I've taken special care around here and we'll sh I'll show you how I do that. There's a possibility of a little pucker there, but let's just see how we go. We'll keep easing it out. And then back down the side and I'll double stitch 
on the two edges there just to make sure that that's not going to come undone on us. Just pop these pins away so they're out of my way and they can't get stuck inside or to line anywhere and then poke anybody who's trying to give her a cuddle. Just make sure you're, you can see on my sewing machine, which I think you can. Let's take my glasses off. Right, okay. So let's add, match this up with the edge of the seam allowance to get that quarter of an inch right. We're going to take a couple of stitches forward. So I'm starting at the neck edge and then the needle's going in the work. So I've got my white is flat against the bed of my sewing machine and I'm making sure with my finger as I go in front that I've not got any creases or any bumps in the felt. And then I'm following along the edge here. Take your time, don't go too fast. And then I'm going to lift up my presser foot because we've sewn a bit now. So I need to now fold that bit back. So the bit of the, the, the dark gray felt back to expose the next piece of the of felt that I'm stitching. And it might only be an inch or a centimetre, but you're just trying to expose that next bit that you're sewing and making sure with your finger that it's flat. So sew that next bit and stop. And then now we're going to go on to this curvy bit. So we're just gonna do a real, let's put the speed right down. Gonna make sure that the white's actually really nice and flat against the bed of the sewing machine a nice and steady round and stop and then I'm going to fold a little bit more back and what I should have done is move my stitch to the other end of my so I hadn't got all of this presser foot on the edge of my fabric stitches stop so a little bit of manipulating going on just to make sure that we're, we're getting it straight and that we're not getting any puckers and then down this other side now fairly easily let's turn that speed back up again now because we're off that really difficult bit just keep making sure that you've not got any any bulk underneath just keep pushing all of this main bit of the head away and make sure that your white is as flat against the bed of your sewing machine as you can get it and then reverse stitch at the bottom here. Take the stitches out, take the, take the needle out of your work, cut off our threads. And let's have a little look. So that's how it's looking on the white. So you can see my stitch line going all the way around and where my tacking threads were. And then on the other side, we've got roughly quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around there. So I'm happy with that. So the next thing I'm going to do is just undo my tacking threads. Just locate the edge of those and they should just pull straight out and they have done. And then what we can do now is, so you've got a lot of um, curved edges here. I might just put a few snips in just going around the edges of here and the seam allowance just to help that just sit a little bit. Just be careful you don't cut through a Clem um, Clementine, Otter Lion's head at all. Just going through the seam allowance just to help that seam just sit, sit out as flat as possible and again on here I'm just going to cut through some of this just to make sure this is going to you can use pinking shears but until I've just turned it round I don't want to to risk it now be careful with this neck because we're going to if we're not careful we're going to stretch it so I'm going to push it through from the other side rather than pull it through and hopefully that will keep that edge nice and tight and together. Let's poke her nose out. Oh, look. Head's all coming together. That's looking nice, isn't it? So she's looking nice there now. So I think we're on to the muzzle next. So let me just get my pieces together. I'm happy with that. That's all nice and neat. I think we can get that sitting really lovely once that's been stuffed. And then we'll look at doing the rest of her. Okay, so just before we move on to the muzzle piece, we're actually going to stuff Otterline's head. 
just to get that shape going so if you get hold of your stuffing remember to be careful if you are making a toy for a child because you do need to use oops because you do need to use CE certified safety stuffing let's start and build this all up inside and get the the shape all going and these these characters do take a little bit more stuffing than you might realize at first because it does all just go in and compact nicely and I do like a nice firm head as well for my characters obviously that's a personal preference but just keep stuffing it in stuffing stuffing the stuffing in in order to start and get her face looking nice and round and her head looking nice and round and you may need some more of this later for now we're just going to stuff it fairly firmly to enable us to work on the muzzle and we do need to stuff that area as well it does just start to give it shape and get her character coming through or if you're making a boy otter his character coming through because obviously this is a although in the book she's called otter line she could quite easily be a male otter starting to get somewhere near now little ears sticking out make sure we're getting all of this because it's still a bit soft on the back there so we need to put some more in there so we push the felt out into the corners and into the nose area. And try not to stretch out your neck though, just remember not to, to be careful with that. But a bit more in there still. You can kind of mould the, the felt, the felt, mould the stuffing to fill in all the gaps that you want it to. It's getting better now, isn't it? Nice round head. Make sure her mouth's coming out. Push sure that in a little bit more, I think. I don't think the white felt is quite as strong as the grey, so just bear that in mind when you're building this character up. You just want to make sure that you're making a nice and even on both sides. She has quite a flat forehead, doesn't she? But that rounded back of the head. The next thing we're going to do now, before we do anything else, is get the white bit of the muzzle and we need the black bit of the muzzle, which is hiding, which is here. And is there an up and a down? I think there could be. Just take those off carefully, don't lose anything. Just fold that in half. So yes, the top of the muzzle is, is slightly more rounded than the bottom, if you look. I think so when we take this here off here and fold it over like that just to give us an idea of how that's going to look then we want it to go onto the top edge of the muzzle so this black here actually folds over the edge like that so you've got half on the front and half on the back whichever way around it is so at least we can make sure that that now is lined up properly because we know where those bits go and then we're going to stitch that in place on the front and on the back so i want to do that with black thread so let's have a look in our haberdashery kit from cool crafting as we have in here A wrap of black thread among other things needle hand sewing needle so what I mean you could I suppose you could sew this down by by machine but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it by hand because I think it will look nicer and whilst I'm wanting to sew the majority of the construction of the head by machine I personally don't mind sewing these smaller facial features pieces on because I think that that is what needs to happen at this stage so let's start our thread through 
on from the other side going through to the side that our tailor's tacks are because we can then tuck those ends down and inside. Put my spectacles on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do some nice little stitches. So I'm going to change the stitch, the pin orientation to going up or down, making sure the white felt is anchored very nicely on here. I'm going to start and do some little stitches. Now when I'm doing my little stitches, let me just hold this so that you can see is I go across diet st straight across on a straight line with on for that the exposed stitches are making if you like the exposed thread will be like that pull it in tight but then I travel at an angle through the work so this piece of thread has come out just here so I'm going to go in straight across to make that a straight stitch but then when I come through the other side I'm making a little diagonal and that then tra means I travel travel along slightly. And we're going to cover these stitches on the back with the rest of the thread. Keep our little... So we are sewing this section on before we sew our darts. That's what the instructions say in the book. So that's what we're going to do. So again, I'm going straight across in the white felt and then traveling across a diagonal into the black. And that gives you those little neat, just little stitches there that when we just pull on them, and then if we ruffle it up with our fingernail, those fibers will, will make the threads disappear. So Tyler's tacks are a little bit in the way, so just keep those out of the way with your, with your needle. You can see little stitches on the back, but we're just trying to not go all the way through the felt. Make sure you keep your pins out of the way as well. We don't want any pins ending up inside our line that we don't know about. So I'm just going to keep on going all the way along this side of her nose. And it does say that on the right side, when we get to the point of the nose, we need to do a long stitch down. So I'm going to do one like that. And I'm going to double it up so that we've got a nice strong line. And I'm going to move to the side and then start coming up this other side. And I'm going in just, just between the crease, between the black and the white. Is it whiting out a bit for you? Sorry. Hopefully you can see the little long stitch I've done just there. It's looking quite neat at the moment, which is good. Oops, I think I've just pulled out some tailor's tacks by mistake. I'll redo those in a second. So back over this side just here, one on the edge, for the turn in the corner. If you get any loops in your threads, just make sure you pull those through so they're nice and tight so you can't see them. One last one before we change over to do the other side. Okay, so let's just fold over now to do the other side. And actually, you can't see the, the um, stitches on the other side, so that's good. But we want it to be roughly the same place. And this is going to be on the wrong side. But we're still wanting to not have those stitches show all the way through. So I'm just going to be extra careful with these ones with the side that you like better than the other you can choose which side is your out and which is your in can't you and on this side I'm not going to do the long stitch I just did that on the outside that's what that's looking like quite nice and now if I do a couple of stitches on the wrong side just hold this thread down 
should hold that together. Okay, let's snip that off now. So that's where we are, that's the outside of our nose. This is going to be going on here eventually, isn't it? I think that was quite nice. Okay, so the next stage then is I think we're going to sew our darts. Yes, we are. So we are going to be putting our darts together and stitching those. I am going to change my machine thread over to white and I'm going to stitch these on the machine. They're only small, but I think that I'll be happier with those staying in just stitched and there's three on each side and that's going to give us that lovely shape isn't it that we need for her and give her her lovely lovely cheeks so let me just get my machine set up for white thread and i'll come back to you okay so i'm just going to fold these across i'm going to pretty much eyeball it because i've got the diagonal of that stitch there to follow so i've got the um my fabric th folded and i'm just going to just do a few stitches forward and i am going to just go back on these literally because they are so small and take the stitching off that's one folding those on so they're on together the your difficulty is going to be making sure they don't go too big so try and follow your stitches as best as you can your tailor's tacks as best as you can remember I didn't put any seam allowance on these at all so this is exactly the, the size that it should be so there's our three so let's take these tailors tacks out now so we've got those three there so that's starting to give her the telltale mouth that she's got and let's go on and do these are the ones on the other side now if any of yours have fallen out then redo your tailors tacks to make sure you get those even on each side and then we can then offer this up onto her nose, can't we? To make that sure. I think I'm going to be padding that out a little bit as well, but that's fine. Okay, so let us have a look at the placement, see what Sarah says about the placement of this nose. Put the machine away for the minute. Pattern pieces to the side as well, because they all, otherwise they all get mi mixed up, don't they, and lost. Right, have a look and see what Sarah says. So, position the muzzle so the folded edge of the nose is just covering the straight sewing line on the main head. So that's there, so it's actually further forward than I thought. So let's put a little, sorry about this, um, otter line, we're going to be poking you. So that kind of nose, the points of the nose are kind of following down from the side seams of the head. Smooth the muzzle down over the centre front and position it tight to the throat. So that's going to be all the way down there and tight to the throat. So then we're going to so we've then really the bottom two darts are sort of on the throat line, aren't they? Is to keep that nice and straight. Let's put the pin in there. Hold that still. So that's how that's looking. Pin in place, pull the sides out so they're equal and sitting onto the face. The lowest dart should line up with the throat seam, that was correct. And it should look a little pouchy as the shape of the felt will not be flat to the head underneath. So I'm just pulling out those side bits. I think I might put a little bit of stuffing in just to hold that in place. I think it just helps it keep its shape a little bit. Just make a little cushion of felt and just poke that in. So the top and the bottom of the of the um, nose muzzle area are flat to the character's head. It's just these side bits that are supposed to be poking out a little bit. So be careful not to poke anything through your felt because you don't want to make any holes. Might have a little bit more, not too much in there. Oh, I don't know, that's looking okay. Put 
pin down the side as well just to hold that in place. Yeah, it's looking okay, isn't it? Maybe a little less felt. Move our toes tacks out of the way for our eyes. And we can just adjust this as we're sewing this anyway down, can't we? So I think the, the sides of the muzzle are sort of slightly proud of her face. Of the otter's face. It takes a little bit of fiddling with, doesn't it, just to get it looking right. And we can always take some out if we think we've got too much in. Preferably before we start sewing that down. Ouch, ouch. It's my finger. Make sure we don't get any blood on the, on the white of the felt because we don't want that to go down either. And then I'm just putting another pin in this side just to hold that flat. Okay, that's looking all right. I'll take a little bit out of this side. I think I've got a little bit too much in this side. So let me just ease a little bit of the stuffing out. Not too much, because I don't want too much to be out of the way. Yeah, that looks more even, doesn't it? So that looks, looks much better. Right, so now we're going to use the black thread that we had to sew the top of this bit down first. And then we can switch to our white thread and then we can sew the rest of it. So let's put this stuffing out of the way because I don't need that bit at the moment. Glasses on because we're doing some close work for the stitching. And what I'm going to do first is take my needle and thread and, and sort of push it in and come out sort of towards the bottom of the felt there because then I can pull that knot in and tuck those tails in. And then I can just take a little stitch again. Let me make sure you can see. So I've just gone in through there and then just sort of buried my thread so it's coming out at this point here, just so that it's out of the way. And now, without almost taking a stitch, sort of hiding it underneath that black felt, I'm going to come right out now on the edge where that seam is there. And that's anchored the knot inside, but now you can't, you can't really see where that is. So I'm going to hold it now with my finger. I've removed the pin. I've got some stuff in there that's going to be in the way, so let's take that out. And now I'm going to take a little stitch of the side seam and indent with my finger so that I've got a little stitch just forming just to hold that right on that nose joint just there on that nose seam. And now I'm going to do the same kind of stitches quite close together because I want this to be on quite firmly. And I'm just going to take a little bite out of the head and then travel along diagonally and come out a little bit further along. Maybe that's a bit too far along. A little bit about an eighth of an inch along. And then pull it tight. And I'm, it's just cinching that nose in onto that head felt. Make sure you come out through the black. Just use your fingernail just to, or your finger just to push in on the character head. We can reshape this afterwards, but we need to make sure that we're getting a big enough bite of the brown felt that that black is going to stay nicely in place. Make sure you don't catch your pins. Make sure you don't get any loops in your thread either. And make sure you're not pulling it away from that seam because we need to end up on that seam too. Make sure you're getting right inside that felt for the head so that it holds on and try and keep those and stitches nice and neat so that's going across there keep thinking those are a black eyes but they're not are they just pins we'll do her eyes in a minute and even stitches along the bridge of her nose there so that's all nicely stitched and then i'm going to take a stitch in on this edge here holding that all in place Make sure there's no loops, just make sure we're still happy with how her nose is looking, and I am. And then I'm going to take a couple of little stitches just to kind of anchor that thread down. And I'm going to come down into this black felt down here because we can hide it in the stitches that we've put down here, can't we? Just go backwards and forwards a couple of times. As long as you don't pull your thread tight, you won't really see it. And then when you're happy that you've got enough stitches holding that all in place, 
kind of slide it along that edge and then come out again and then we'll snip that off. Okay, that's nice at the moment. I'm happy with that. And I've used, I found before that if you just use your fingernail and just ruffle up the, the fibres of the felt on that edge, it does help hide your stitches. So now let's change over to the other thread. Slightly off white, I think this one is, isn't it, for the actual sewing the muzzle on. Get a decent length because we've got a bit to sew. Let's snip that off. So I'm now going to start on this side. Now, because we've got the edges of the darts and we, we've not got that folded under at all, when I get to those points, I'm going to do a stitch across the felt to hold the dart together as well. So that's just an extra belt and braces. Now, I like the, the pouchy look I've got going on here with the two sides of her head. So I'm going to keep with that. And when we take this pin out on the side, it will release some of that. But it, I think it'll still look nice. I'm just moving the the threads for the tailor's tack out of the way for her eyes. So with this, I'm going to feed my needle in underneath the muzzle and go through some of the brown felt. And then I'm going to come up towards the edge of that side seam. If I don't lose my pin needle as I'm doing it, there we go. In there, look. So just in that section there, because then when I pull onto this, that's going to hide that not inside the work. Now, being careful not to stab yourself. I'm going to just take a little stitch through the white felt now. Just to kind of and do a double stitch, just to anchor that in place. Right, so now our thread is secure. So now I'm going to take a little bite out of the grey with pressing it down and then come out into the white only like a little bit down and then I'm going to do the same thing again press in on the nose because you don't want to come out too far and I've got little um, loops I just separate out the threads of my thread the two strands of my thread just to make sure that that's sitting right and I've still got have I got or is that just the felt that's the ends of the thread. So now that we've got that in place, I am now just going to take a little over stitch over the top of that end of that dart just to hold those two sides together. And then I'm going to take another stitch holding one side of that dart then I'm going to move this pin out of the way because I am going to stab myself and end up with red stains all over the mouth and I don't want to do that. So any threads that I see or any bits of stuffing, I'm just using the, ne the nose of my needle, just the point of my needle, just to smooth those under. And now from my... I'm going to take another bit out of the brown and through into the white. And cinch that in. And I'm just going to work my way down. So I'm going straight across the same way as we did with the black and into the white. Along behind the threads. Keep those threads nice and tight. We need that definition on the muscle, don't we? And just pull that in nice and neat and then You can manage. That's it. Coming down to another dart, so I'll do one more stitch. I'm just going to take a stitch just to hold that edges of that dart together. I don't want it to come undone. And that's adding to the Add into the shaping, isn't it? Maybe I just do a couple more just down because it just seems to that one just seems to want to come under a little bit. And I'm basically just going to keep going round her head, her muzzle like this, just attaching the muzzle on the white onto the brown felt for the for going round here. 
and making sure that I don't have any loops in my threads by just separating them and then just smoothing those along and tucking in any bits of thread that want to sort of poke out. Make sure you get a decent bite of your brown though because you won't see how much you've taken of your brown but that's what's going to really anchor this muzzle down onto the face. Make sure it doesn't fall off. Yeah, hopefully you can see that's looking all right coming around there now. And as I say, what I'll do at the end is just ruffle up with my, with my fingers and get those fibres just mixing in there. That thread just there it needs to just come off. Make sure it's not your stitching thread that you're using. And then we'll be putting some whiskers through these in a minute or two as well. Or maybe as a finishing touch when we get to the end bit. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to carry along the bottom here, down to here, and then I'm going to finish off pretty much the same as I've started. And then we'll look at putting her eyes on. So next thing we've got to do, once we've got our muzzle all sewn on, and as I say, just, just ruffle up the, the fibres around that. And it'll just soften that edge for you. But I think you'll think she's looking quite nice, hopefully close up don't give everybody a close up but give you some idea of how that's looking without all the light lighting it out okay and the next we're going to do is put in her eyes so I do like to use a doll needle for this because I do find that it's much easier to get through from side to side and in our little kit we've got two little black buttons which we're going to use for her eyes excuse the crinkling while I just get those out Okay, so we've got those two, so let's get some more black thread onto our needle. Now, if you have got any extra strong thread, you can use that for thread sewing on the eyes. And you do need quite a lot because we're going across from side to side, so each stitch is at least two or three inches long, so you do need to have that um, length to it. And this time for so we've got a little knot on the end there. So what I'm going to do now is actually come up through the head, through the stuffing in the head, and I'm going to come out at one of the eye points. Once I've done that, I then take out the tailor's tack. Just make sure that you've got that where you want. I don't put it too tight because I want the knot to stay in the centre there. Then I'm going to go in and out through my um, button and I'm going on the diagonal with that and then I'm going to go back in close to so take like a, almost like a bite of the felt so I'm not right in where I started just like a couple of millimeters across and then we want to come out in the center of our tailor's tack that we did for the other eye and once the needle's there I just take that out again just so that I don't lose where I am oh, I've got one that's going stuck Snip that off close and then we should be able to pull that through. Okay. So I just pull this it through till we've got the other till we've got the needle the eye ready. It looks quite low to me, but that's where the position was. Let's have a just let me just put this one on as well so I don't lose it. So in and out on the diagonal. And then the secret is now that if you just keep that button loose, you then oh I've got a little bit of pink thread there, I can see it. Right is then take another little stitch out of your thread here and then you're wanting to go come out on the other side through one of the holes that you've already got a stitch through and then on the diagonal again and then you're passing through on the holes that you've already taken a stitch through so you don't get those mixed up and then the idea is that you then just give it a little bit of a pull just to indent them slightly as you're going through. I normally like to do about three stitches on each one. So that's how she's looking at the moment. Oh, let me just move that haberdashery out of the way. And I'll do one more stitch going through. And that's why I say with the doll needle, it's just so much easier because you've got more to play with in your hand. That's going through that one, that's fine. 
oops, around the back of her head, around her ear. Make sure you've not got any loops or any loops on the inside of those buttons. Just indent slightly as you go. I'm going to go through this one, but now I'm going to start and go through the other di orientation of the of the eye hole because they've got four holes in them. So we need to start and use the. That might be indented too much. Let's just loosen that off a bit. Want it to look cute, not not indented, and then in through the other hole now, and then we're going to come out on the other side through the other orientation of the holes again. This is going to give us that crisscross in the centre of her eyes. And you can use white thread as well if you wanted to. It depends on what you've got to hand and what you want to use. But you're trying to make the thread through the other orientation of the eye look the same. Same, same thickness really. So I'm not going to pull mine in anymore because I think I've pulled those in enough. Just trying to trial and error, just poking that needle backwards and forwards until you get out through the hole that you want to. It's looking quite nice, isn't she? And then with this one, I'm going to go down and through into the neck again. And then if I can take a couple of large stitches just through the neck, through the, f the stuffing in the neck. That will just anchor those that thread in there for me. I can just snip it off. It doesn't matter that we've got a long tail. Couldn't find my box for my needles then because that'll just get tucked up inside. Oops, we've got thread on the Otterline already. So there we go. There's Otterline's hair. Oh no, we've got the whiskers to do first. Hold on one second. What to say about whiskers? This is the thread that we've got in the kit that we're going to use for our whiskers. How many whiskers does she need to have? One, two, three, four, about five. And what they say is, if you do about a couple of inches and then do a knot, we've got a two inch length and a knot, and then we poke this through to the other side, wherever we want to go for her whiskers through there and then the idea is that we then tie another knot to this side now these might not be secure enough if you were doing this for a child you might want to find a different way of doing your knots this is not going to feel very very secure I don't think so that's one knot Another one. So literally just putting the knot through and then pulling it through until the, the knot is on the edge and then just doing a single knot this side. And then if you use the um, point of your needle where that thread has come through on the character's face it kind of tightens up around there so that you can then tighten that in. And then a couple of inches. And they say to do about five of these. Fun at finishing off these little characters, isn't it? And giving them their little personalities. there I think a bit further back and if you don't like them you can always pull these out and reposition them as well can't you make sure you don't get any of your other ones caught in that one's caught in And then use the needle again just to hold that in. And then you can just tighten that up around the needle and just cinch it in. And that works well like that. Yeah, I do think they're going to pull out a little bit if you're not careful, especially for a child. 
And then let's see, I think most of those are the same length. Let's just see what length we've got those. They're about an inch and a half long, I think, and I'm happy with that. So let's get all five of these together. A bit like giving her a haircut, isn't it? Let's measure that for an inch and a half, which is about there. And then snip all of those off as well. So it feels like a bit wasteful after we were being careful with the thread. But there we go. There's Otterline's face, all nicely done. Oops, extra thread. So let me just turn the camera around and we'll have a little chat. Okay, so here we go. Here's Wilhelmina's head with the lovely whiskers, a nice little Lubberton eyes, a lovely black nose with a little bit down, a little gently stuffed um, pouches for her face. I think she's looking really cute. There's little ears, top of her head and the back of her head. This bit here will all tuck inside her uh, to give her the to give us the neck. Let's give her a little bit of a, a twist. Love a little cute ears. They're really sweet, aren't they? Okay, so one machine sewn, well, mostly machine sewn. Um, Otterline's head. Forgot her name then. Sorry, Otterline. Forgot your name. Um, so yes, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me today. Um, I'll get on with doing the rest of, I've got this video uploaded first, edited and then uploaded. Um, and then I'll start on working on um, Otterline's body and her legs. It's very similar to the other characters. So if you've already done some of the other characters, you may already feel confident enough and through using some of my other videos just to go straight ahead on onto doing that. So you don't have to wait for me. But I will, in case this is the, your first character and the only one that you're going to be making, I will then go on and do the, the body and the limbs for you so you can have a look at those but for the start that's your otter lion's head looking all lovely um if you do want to sponsor a video of your own because as i said georgina bird has sponsored this video and we really must send out a really big thank you to georgina on behalf of myself and on behalf of you who are watching at the moment but also on behalf of everybody else who watches this video in the future and, and uses it to help make your own Otterline. We really do want to say a really big thank you to Georgina for her generosity and kindness in sponsoring this kit for Otterline. We really are very grateful, so thank you, um, Georgina. Um, and then what we can, if you do want to sponsor one of your own, then I've got a coffee account. It's pronounced, it's coffee, but it's pronounced, it's spelled K-O hyphen F-I. And there's a link below in the description or you can find it on um, the about page about me as well. And that's the way to do it. So send me a message on there with your donation, whatever it is, or your um, sponsorship money. And then let me know which character or outfit it is that you're wanting to make or see made. And then I will collect that together and then when we've got enough I'll buy the kits and then pop the video up for you but um, for now thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed this video or you enjoy my teaching style then please do consider subscribing to my channel as well I got told off by one of my subscribers the other day because she said I don't push it enough um, and I don't really want to be on one of those people just saying subscribe all the time but if you if you do enjoy it, it really does help because what it does is it pushes out my channel to other people who are interested in sewing as well and then hopefully they will find my channel um entertaining and they'll they'll be able to find it youtube it's the algorithms that youtube use apparently the more people who give it a thumbs up the more people who leave me a comment the more people who interact with my channel um then that, that's what tells youtube that this is this is good content and that other people might want to see it so if you are able to just give it a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button then i'd really appreciate it if you want to send a donation for a coffee then i'd really appreciate that too but more importantly Thank you for spending time with me today because that's the most important thing. I hope you enjoy sewing as well and I hope I show you that it is possible to make either these little characters or do the dressmaking or the children's sewing that I do as well or the quilting and um, anything like that. So my hair's going in my eyes. Um, so, you know, there's, there's plenty of, of variety there really for lots of people to enjoy hopefully and I hope you're one of those people who's enjoyed sewing along with me today. So let me get this video uploaded for you as soon as I can do and on behalf of Otterline and I or a half completed Otterline and I, have a great day everybody and happy stitching. Bye!